from evolutionary advantages to modern mutations that are stumping scientists. This list is full of creatures that are adapting to our ever changing earth every day. Let's jump right into the cold deep waters as we talk about the top 10 mutated deep sea creatures that are baffling scientists. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have Foraminifera. These guys are giant single celled organisms that are kind of like oversized amoebas and they can be found in the sediment on seabeds throughout the world. In 1995 however when Japanese researchers were able to collect samples of sediment located in the Mariana Trench they found 432 living Foraminifera. I know I made these guys sound really large before but I just mean large in terms of the single celled organism world. They are still super tiny and they are usually found with a hard outer shell but not these ones that were found in the trench. These guys have found a way to adapt by basically building their own shells from proteins, organic polymers and even sand. The ones most commonly found in the Mariana Trench are called xenophyophores and these guys use the fact that grains of sand are mostly made of silicone dioxide which is the main constituent of glass to their advantage. They basically glue sand from ocean sediments, cast off shells and microbial skeletons to make their own kind of pressure proof shells. So I guess these guys really are like the engineers of the deep sea. In our number 9 spot today we have the benthocodone. We have all seen a jellyfish before but these deep sea dwellers are unlike any of the ones that we usually find. Firstly they prefer depths of around 2500 feet or 762 meters usually right on the sea floor. These guys are actually quite small and compact with their bell usually measuring just 2 to 3 centimeters in diameter. Despite their small size however they still have around 1500 little wispy tentacles that help to propel them through the icy cold depths. These jellies like to chow down on small crustaceans and tiny unicellular organisms but sometimes their meals are bioluminescent which is what has led them to develop one of the other unique features on these jellies. This unique feature would be the red color that can can be found in part of their bell. Most jellyfish we know of are transparent and if this was the case for these ones their bioluminescent meals would be a dead giveaway for the larger hungry predators lurking around the deep sea. This is why the bit of a red that they have in the bell is so important to their survival as it acts as a cover for this blue glow so that they continue on their merry way throughout the dark depths of the ocean. In our number 8 spot today we have aluminum plated amphipods. These guys are found throughout the Mariana Trench including in the challenge deep which is the deepest part of the trench. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate but the extreme environment in these guys habitats makes their shells basically just dissolve. They of course can't just be walking around naked and shellless so what do they do? They adapt in order to preserve their shells. After collecting some of these guys from the deepest parts of the ocean scientists were able to realize that their exoskeleton contained aluminum on the surface which then led to the question how did these guys find the metal since it is pretty sparse in seawater. Well, as it turns out, these guys use sugar based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the seafloor that it ends up ingesting while devouring the plant debris that floats down from the surface. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is a compound that we as humans use for things like protecting our upset stomachs from stomach acid. This gel then coats their shell and acts as a type of chemical protection so as to keep the calcium carbonate exoskeleton from dissolving. I don't know, I just think that's one of the coolest things that I've ever heard a shrimp do. This is the first known amphipod to do something like this and these guys are now an important part of researching how maybe one day we can find an environmentally friendly way to produce aluminum. In our number 7 spot today we have the deep sea hermit crab. Ok, many of us have seen or at least heard of a hermit crab before so at first thought they are the weirdest thing out there but as it turns out the deep sea variety variety is quite interesting. Instead of these guys carrying around empty gastropod shells like the hermit crabs we are used to, these guys instead carry around sea anemones and it is one of the weirdest looking things I've ever seen in my life. It looks like these crabs are missing a pair of legs but instead the legs have actually been adapted to hold the anemone in place. It's definitely an incredible evolutionary advancement for these crabs but I just can't help but be creeped out by it. In our number 6 spot today we have barophilic bacteria. 
This bacteria is characterized by its preference for an environment with pressure greater than atmospheric pressure, which of course makes a place like the Mariana Trench a perfect candidate for a home. These bacteria have been isolated from deep sea environments and found to grow rapidly at low temperatures and high pressures. This low temperature high pressure combo that is found in the deep sea environment is usually the cause for the decrease of the fluidity of lipids as well as the depression of the function of biological membranes. But this doesn't happen in this bacteria, which has led to the theory that they must have some sort of mutation to have a sort of mechanism that allows their lipids to adapt to their extreme environments. Aside from their superpower, these bacteria help to support life by being a source of carbon for the deep sea animals that end up ingesting them. In our number 5 spot today we have vent crabs. Vent crabs are so named because they absolutely love and thrive in the extreme environment that is found at hydrothermal vents. These white crabs are actually endemic to hydrothermal vents and they were first described in 1980. The crabs in this family are usually blind and abundant. In fact, their numbers are so vast that scientists often use the clusters of them to help find the location of hydrothermal vents. The eyes of vent crabs are what I really want to talk about today because they change throughout their life, which helps them adapt to their environment. Young vent crabs usually have eyes that would be comparable to their shallow water companions, but upon metamorphosis, their eyes degenerate and they become naked retinas. Hydrothermal vents produce light in the infrared wavelengths, and this change in the vent crab's eyes was made through evolution because it actually allows them to better see this light, although it causes them to not be able to see most other things. It's like a similar concept to night vision goggles. So basically, vent crabs have night vision. Kind of. It is so interesting to see and learn about how deep sea creatures adapt to their individual environments and circumstances. In our number four spot today, we have baby shark. So apparently, shark fetuses with two heads are becoming more common around the world. Who would have thought? According to experts, the mutation that leads to this trait is known as axial bifurcation, and it's seen not just in sharks, but other animals as well, including humans. The question though is why it is starting to happen more and more often in sharks. Sadly, this mutation has quite a negative impact on the sharks as it is unlikely that the sharks with this mutation will even live to see their own birth, but for those who do survive until birth, it is highly unlikely that they will survive long in the wild. Right now, scientists are working hard to figure out what is causing this mutation specifically in the sharks. The leading theories include overfishing, which is leading to a smaller gene pool and thus a higher susceptibility to genetic mutations, or even potentially things like metabolic disorders, pollution or viral infections. In our number 3 spot today we have the brittle star. This is a species that was found in 2011 but it took 10 years for it to be researched and fully classified which happened just last year in 2021. This is a species of brittle star that was found during an expedition on the Banque Durand Seamount which is off of the coast of New Caledonia in the Pacific Ocean. This specific brittle star first caught the attention of experts because of two atypical features. One was that it had 8 arms. This was unusual because most have five. And the other unusual feature is their eight sets of razor sharp teeth. It is believed that these teeth, which line every jaw, are used to snare and shred their prey. This creature definitely is quite remarkable and is the product of millions of years of evolution, where it has adapted and changed greatly to fit its needs in the changing environment around it. But it is likely the last survivor of an ancient lineage which dates back to the Jurassic period. In our number two spot today, we have giant isopods. Despite their appearance, these guys are neither aliens or pill bugs and are just one of those strange and weirdly large deep sea creatures. These rather large crustaceans can reach lengths of around 15 inches and while that's not the biggest deep sea creature out there, that's pretty insane for the isopod world. These guys get their size from what is known as deep sea gigantism, which is an evolutionary tendency for deep sea creatures to grow larger than their shallow water counterparts. It isn't exactly clear why this happens, but it does and is seen in a few different species. It is thought that this may be due to the cold temperatures, which may increase cell size and lifespan, which both may lead to increased body size. In our number one spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty 
pretty strong contender for strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang like teeth to grab onto their prey in their dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead have slippery, eel like skin, which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the angler fish, which you might be familiar with thanks to the Disney Pixar classic Finding Nemo, these guys have a little lighted barbell that hangs from its lower jaw in order to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another, less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have adapted to have a special stomach that will ensure that the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye!